the best way you can strengthen your beliefs is to get out of your comfort zones. And the reason for that is that once you are outside of a comfort zone where you have to witness new things, learn new skills, meet new people, that's when you will realize that your beliefs are either very strongly grounded and therefore you can move forward, or it's possible that you might say, okay, I used to have a belief. I have to ha I used to have several beliefs, but is it time for me to change them? And that is the topic for today. So my name is Alain Faber. I'm a high school teacher. And in 2023, I mean, my goal is to change the way I see things so that I can make the world a better place. And at the same time, see how far I can push this idea of increasing my, my reach. In the last couple of days, I've been looking at this book here by um, Bob Proctor, Change Your Paradigm and Change Your Life. And as I read, I read the book, actually I'm at chapter two, I realized that when Bob Proctor talks about the paradigm shift or changing your paradigm, it's the same thing as what Evan Carmichael says about changing your beliefs or strengthening your beliefs. And if you look at the two, often the message is similar, even though the vocabulary is different. So what, what can we say about beliefs today? And it's a topic that was important for me. I've been thinking about it throughout the day. If you want to strengthen your beliefs, you have to find a way to set goals and put in place the habits to make sure that you can grow your beliefs and your values. Because it's, it's easy to say, well, I believe this, I believe that. I believe that I can build a business. Well, I can believe that. The big issue though, is that I don't know how to get there. And this is this process that I'm going through right now. So I have the belief that I can do this, great. But in order to do so, I need to have goals. Okay, I've set some goals myself. I know what I would like to have before at the end of this year and for next year. So goals are important. On the other hand, having goals alone doesn't make any difference in your life and what you can achieve. What you need to do is actually create some habits so that you can bring the process where you know what you're going to do day in, day out. So you can build the resilience of building what you want. Because a goal is a vision, somewhere you want to go. But between that goal and where you are right now, you need to build the habits to make it happen. Now you're going to say, okay, what kind of habits do I need? Ah, and that brings me to what um, Tony Robbins mentions often is that if you want to achieve more, if you want to grow who you are, you need to raise your standards. So when you raise your standards, you are learning from different people. You are addressing your values saying, okay, these are my values. Are they great? Do I need to uh, make them stronger or do I need to change some values based on my experiences and based on the, on the new learning? So when Tony Robbins says you need to raise your standards, that's important because by raising your standards, what you're expecting from you will be different. It will be at a much, uh, higher, uh, let's see, much higher achievement. That sounds strange. Anyway, Grant Cardin says you 10x what you can think. So you need to raise your standard so that you can set the correct habits so that you can achieve your goals. There's some people that spend their lives with goals and don't necessarily achieve them. There's a lot of people with high standards and sometimes they, are, they have so many high standards that they tend to be perfectionist but then they, it's one way for them to not move forward because they're stuck in their standards. So we need to look at the variety or the, the range between the two, having goals and habits and having standards from which those habits are built. So with respect to habits, in the last couple of weeks, I've been eating better, I've been moving more, and I've been learning new skills so I can build what I want to do. Am I at the end of what I want to achieve? I'm so far from there because I still don't know how to set my online store, for example. 
this is my plan for the next couple of weeks. All I need is the time to make it happen. So, okay. So how can you actually raise your standards? In order to raise your standard, you need to have people to ask you questions about your standards or propose different standards from which you can um, assess where you are. The best way is the following. The best way to test your standards is to learn new skills. If you think I'm a high school te teacher, that's wonderful. Students are going through the system and they're learning more and more. Now, graduating from high school is wonderful. You can do so many things. However, the standards are not to the point where you can uh, be an engineer. In order to be an engineer for a person that is in high school, you need to learn new things. You need to go for a degree. Then you raise your standards. You raise your skills so that you can actually get there. See how it goes. The next thing you need to do in order to raise your standard is you need to improve your vocabulary. Because too often, if we are within using the same vocabulary all the time, then we are addressing the similar issues. We notice similar opportunities because that's what we notice. If you can improve your vocabulary, what happens is you may be able to hear someone talk about something that interests you. You might watch a video about a topic that now you understand their message. You can uh, read a book that does the same thing. Reading, reading a book, if you don't have the vocabulary, the level of vocabulary to understand and appreciate the writing, it's not, you're going to just take the book and put it aside. So here, Improving your vocabulary, you know, and improving your skills will help you raise your standards. The next one I have here is to have to increase your network. So here we know who we know. We uh, and then every week, every month, we take care of, of our family, we take care of our friends and people around us. But something that is interesting is to use, for example, YouTube to learn from different people. Different people have different perspective and having a different perspective can help you appreciate the depth of a concept, the depth of a value. So that's when you see someone that is, uh, I don't know. So when I see a uh, Grant Cardone that is doing advertisement, he says, oh, I have so many units and I own so many billions of dollars of real estate. Okay. It's hard for me to understand what he means because I don't know much about real estate. On the other hand, when I listen to a video from Evan Carmichael and he shares his point of view about beliefs, what we can do to be better, I've, I've followed Evan Carmichael long enough that I understand now the vocabulary that he's using and I have a better understanding of his message. Will I understand better Grant Cardone one day? Most likely. But at this point, I don't have the vocabulary to appreciate it. And having a more net, uh, building my network in that way is not what is helping me right now. On the other hand, building my network with people with similar understanding and beliefs than Evan Carmichael and his community can help me better understand my own values and beliefs. The fourth part here that you need, if you want to raise your standard, I have here. You need to uh, to be open to new outcomes. And the reason for that is too often when we do things, we are stuck in our val uh, in our structure. We know what we do every day. We have a routine and it feels comfortable. We know what we have to do. We know what the outcomes will be. On the other hand, if you are looking at new opportunity, if you are getting new skills, building your vocabulary, building your network, what happened is you might realize that, okay, what I've been doing for the last year, the last five years, the last 10 years, it's been great. But let's see if I can um, change the outcome that might come through if I just change an idea. So for example, I have a YouTube channel for science in French. And the reason for that is for, for a couple of decades, my mind, I was teaching science in a classroom. But once I started to create videos on YouTube, then what happened is I changed a bit the outcome. The outcome here was not just me teaching science to students in my classroom. 
It was helping students better understand science so that they can change the world. That is a change in my perspective and in my beliefs. How was I able to do, able to do that? I've been following Evan Carmichael for a long time so that I started to learn how to trust myself. I learned to have new beliefs. I learned new skills. I learned new vocabulary so it's easier for me. And I built my network so that I can have new outcomes. And that gets exciting because I know what I'm going to do tomorrow at my school. On the other hand, I know that there are there are parallel goals, other things I want to do that is aligning with my goals and also aligning with what I can do for my students. So this is the message for you today. Build, uh, having beliefs is important, but it's important if you want to reinforce your beliefs or maybe notice that some beliefs need to change. You need to create um, better habits or improve your habits based on your standards. Raise your standards, raise your habits, and then you'll be able to improve and increase your beliefs so you can do much more tomorrow compared to what you did yesterday. On this, be great. I'm going to put here a link to my milestone journey. And here I'm going to put a link to a video that will interest you. And I'll see you there in a moment.